Hello, welcome to lesson 16 of the Waves and Wave Phenomena playlist. This is the last lesson video of this playlist and it will be on Doppler effect. Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency when a source or an observer are moving relative to each other. And that was an example you might have heard before from an ambulance siren or a racing car or any fast object that is moving relative to you and it's making a sound and you're hearing that sound at a different pitch when it's approaching you and when it's moving away from you. So Doppler effect is what explains this phenomenon. Here's a simulation that I'm going to use. First, we're looking at a stationary source which is emitting a constant frequency. But let's see what happens when the source starts moving. You're now looking at the source moving towards the right and at equal time intervals it's emitting a new wavefront. And each wavefront has now shifted towards the right. At a higher speed, where the speed of the source is equal to the speed of the wave, you can see that the source moves together with the wave. And if it moves even faster, it's now moving ahead of the wavefronts. Doppler effect is the observed change in the frequency of a wave due to the relative motion between source and observer. It could either be due to the speed of the source that is moving, or it could be due to the observer moving relative to the source. Here I have a moving source and I have an observer over here. The source is generating waves at a constant frequency. This view is going to show us what the observer is detecting. So the frequency heard by an observer is how frequently the wavefronts are passing. So because the source is moving closer to the observer right now, Here, this will be the frequency of the wavefronts that pass by the observer. Watch the frequency here. It's about 309. And at this instant, the source now starts moving away from the observer. The distance between the wavefronts have increased. So the wavefronts are generated at the same frequency. But since the source is moving, the origin of every new wavefront is changing. And that determines how frequently the wavefronts pass by the observer. And as you can see on this pro view here, it's measured as 209. You might remember that this was 309 when the source was approaching. Let's keep watching and see the view again as the source moves in the opposite direction. So the source now started approaching the observer. You're measuring a 309 hertz frequency. And now the source started moving away and we're measuring a much lower frequency as you can see on the pro view. So this graph shows an FO would be a value that is over here. That would be the original emitted frequency by the source. As it approaches an observer, we detect a higher frequency. This is the instant when it just passes by the observer and there's a sudden decrease in the observed frequency. So as the source is moving away, there is a lower frequency observed. It's important to note that if the source or observer is moving at constant speed, the observed frequency is also constant. And no matter which one is moving, a higher frequency is heard when they are getting closer and a lower frequency is heard when they are getting away. Now the calculation does depend on which one is moving. So first we'll handle the moving source case. The formula you see here is given in the data booklet with the label that this is for moving source. Now, remember what we said earlier about observing frequency higher or lower. When the source and the observer are moving closer, the observer should hear a higher frequency. Now, in this formula, the F prime is the observed frequency. 
F is the original emitted frequency by the source. V is the speed of the wave and us is the speed of the source you need to be smart about this mathematically you only have the formula and the fact that it is for moving source in the data booklet this detail i added in red doesn't appear in the data booklet you only have the plus and minus so you need to know when to use the plus when to use the minus version but like i said if you're mathematically smart about it you will easily remember which one without having to memorize so all you need to remember is the images we saw and when they are getting closer I'll go back to the previous slide to remind you of this for a minute a higher frequency is heard when they are getting closer a lower frequency is heard when they are getting away so when the source is getting closer to the observer the source speed is in the denominator it's either added to or subtracted from the speed of the wave the plus version will make the denominator larger than the numerator. If this ratio is less than 1, the observed frequency will be less than the frequency emitted. That was when they were moving away. The plus version when moving away. The minus version is used when source is approaching because if that's a minus sign, the denominator will now be smaller than the numerator, which means the ratio is bigger than one. The observed frequency is higher than the emitted frequency, which should be the case when the source and observer are getting closer. Looking at the moving observer case, again, this formula is given in the data booklet with the label. Once again, F is the emitted frequency, F prime is the observed frequency, v is the speed of the wave and uo is the speed of the observer so again when it is moving closer to the source the observer should get the wave fronts more frequently now that the formula has the plus or minus in the numerator the conditions change thinking about this mathematically when to use the plus when to use the minus if the observer is approaching, we use the plus sign because we know when the observer is approaching, the observed frequency must be larger than the emitted frequency and that is when this ratio is larger than 1, which means the numerator must be larger than the denominator. So the plus version of this formula will do. In the case when you hear a lower frequency when moving away, you use the negative. Version. Everything I have explained until now was about sound. So the formula that is given for moving observer and the formula that is given for moving source both apply to sound. Does this mean light waves don't follow Doppler effect? Of course not. Light also follows Doppler effect. Just like we discussed for sound, when a source is getting closer to an observer, the observed frequency is higher than the original. So in this case, if there's a source moving towards the left, an observer on this side receives wavefronts more frequently. If there's an observer on this side, that observer receives wavefronts less frequently. So the rules of the change in the observed frequency apply exactly the way they do for sound. But the mathematical calculation changes and we now give a name to each of this frequency shifts. Getting closer, observing a lower wavelength, a blue shift. In case where we observe a longer wavelength or a lower frequency, we call that case a red shift. And that is simply because blue has a smaller wavelength than red. In the unit astrophysics we will get back to this and we will use this information to comment and calculate the speed that distant stellar objects are moving away from us and we'll also explain what we know about the expansion of the universe so for now to understand Doppler effect we know if a star is showing redshift its wavelength measured over time shows an increase. We call that a redshift. And if a star is showing redshift, that means it's moving away from us. In the case when a galaxy is approaching us, 
over time, we see a decrease in the wavelength we observe. And we call that a blue shift. It doesn't mean that we see a blue color. And this doesn't mean we see it red. Not necessarily. The names are given only because red has a longer wavelength than blue. So if the shift in wavelength is towards the longer side, well, it shifts towards the red. And if the change is towards the smaller side, then it shifts towards the blue, which is why we call the shift to a longer wavelength a red shift and the shift to a smaller wavelength a blue shift. The mathematical calculation of this is different from sound. We're given this formula in the data booklet. This is the version that applies to light. You have to be very careful when you come across a Doppler effect question. If the question is about the sound wave, you use the formulas that we just discussed. They're different from moving source and moving observer. If the question gives you an example of Doppler effect of any electromagnetic wave, this can be mentioned electromagnetic wave, or you can read that it's an X-ray, that it's a visible light, or it's microwave, infrared, any section of the electromagnetic spectrum should take you to this formula for any calculation you might have to do for a Doppler effect related question. Be very careful about the kind of wave that is given. So the change in frequency over the emitted frequency, that's equal to the ratio of the change in wavelength to the wavelength. And that ratio is equal to the receding or approaching speed of the object to the speed of the wave, which is speed of light. So this cartoon is basically showing you a, a car that is approaching, it looks blue, a car that is moving away that is red. Now you can be the nerd that can explain this to other people if you want. Also, this one is one of my favorites. It says the short is blue if you run fast enough. Okay, the last bit of this unit is explaining how radar astronomy or speed detectors work using microwaves. So, remember what kind of wave microwaves are? They are electromagnetic waves. So, we have to use that third formula which applies to electromagnetic waves. But this is another unique case that we have to emphasize. So, these devices are speed detectors. How do they know how fast you're going? What do they do? Well, they have sensors. Okay, great, they have sensors. What kind of sensors? What does it sense? What does it do to sense what? How do they know how fast the car is going anyway? What it does is first it sends a wave to the car. Now, let's say we're finding the speed for this car. The device is sending out waves of known frequency. In the first step, this car is a moving observer receiving that wave. So there goes Doppler effect. But the device has to receive the information to know if the car is over or below the speed limit. How does it know that? It needs to get the light reflected back to it. So on step two, car is now moving a source, reflecting the wave back to the radar. The shift in the frequency takes place twice. Once when the car receives the wave as a moving observer, and the second time when the car reflects and sends the wave back as a moving source, which is why the shift in F is twice. So we have to modify the formula. The change in frequency is twice what it would be using the formula. So the rest of this video is the homework question slides. And as usual, the solutions will be on my next video. Thank you very much. You have completed topic four and topic nine.